My name is uh, Vinnie Porzio, better known as Vinnie Brooklyn. I started in Palisade Amusement Park in 1941. I used to set up milk bottles. People would knock them down with three balls and they would get coupons. The more coupons they got, the bigger the prize they got. I worked in the milk bottles for about two years. Then I went to guessing ages and weights at 13. People used to come over and they used to, you know, ask me, how does the game work? You know, I tell them I guess their age within two years or I guess their weight within three pounds. And uh, the men seemed to be more bad about their age than the women because if you made them a little older, they would really hate you, you know. So then there was times when I used to guess their age, I used to guess their weight, the month they were born in, I guess the state they were born in. And they asked me, what state was I born? You're going to guess the state? I say, yeah, what state was I born in? I say, the state of infancy. So that, 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 would, get, that would get them mad. And then I'd guess where they got their shoes. And they say to me, you're going to guess where I got my shoes? Yeah, I says, you got them on your feet. And they would lose. But the best one was, I says, I'll guess what you had for breakfast this morning. You know, what you ate for breakfast this morning. Not what you had. I'm going to guess what you ate. And they used to say to me, you're going to guess... What I had for breakfast, what I ate this morning for breakfast, I used to say, yeah. So I used to write pad, I used to write down nothing. And I used to say to them, all right, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? I didn't have no breakfast. And I used to tell them, man, you lost, I got you. <laughs> Unless you used to get some guy used to say, I had pasta vazool, I had something, then, then you give him a prize, you know. They had the Bill Miller's Riviera, and people used to come in there to Palisade Amusement Park. So one day, who comes walking out of the restaurant? Tony Martin. So I guess this weight, he came over. I guess this weight, I lost. And I gave him a cane. And he didn't like the idea of the cane. So then I gave him a ball. And told him, have a ball, you know. <laughs> they used to have the frozen custard, vanilla and chocolate, you know. And if you wanted to give somebody a free custard, all you had to do was break the tip of the cone because all the cones were counted. So you had to make sure you got the bottom of the cone so you can show it, and then uh, everything would be fine. In 1947, my mother and my sister came up to the park, and they got a job. The park then, uh, custard stand, was, uh, was manager was Irving Conowitz. So he gave my mother a job, and he gave my sister a job. And my mother used to stick her head outside the custard stand to watch whose age I was guessing, to make sure I wasn't fooling around with anybody. And if I was fooling around, she'd start hollering at me from the custard stand. <laughs> so then uh, when the park closed that night, we used to go to Coney Island and swim all night long and have a ball. August 1944 was on a Sunday. I was waiting for the bus on Palisade Avenue. I got up to the park about 2, 2.30. I heard fire, fire, fire. And the fire started on the Virginia Reel, and people were going through the tunnel getting burned. So at that, I had to go to the administration building, open, to help them open up jars of Vaseline to put on the burned people. They had the Red Cross there and everything. And then the fire engines came in and everything else. They went to the pool. They tried to put the fire out by using the pool water and everything else. And uh, everything burned down at the end of the park because at that time, the park was like all canvas, uh, awnings and all that. Back in the 40s, the, the park was really a fire trap, put it that way. Uh, Joe Rinaldi at the time was the superintendent of the park. He used to watch everything around the park, walk around. If anything was wrong, he'd fix it. He'd make sure everything was on the up and up and no rides were bad and everything else. So the guess your age I had, right behind me was MacArthur Dive Bomber. Well, next, next to me was MacArthur Dive Bomber, where the cars used to go on an angle like this, and they would go turn around this way. All the cars would turn around, and I would stand back there and just grab the money as it fell out of their pockets. So one day, I washed my dungarees, and uh, I wanted to get them dried. So I told the guy, Duke, who used to run the ride, could I put my... Dungarees underneath there to dry. He says, go ahead. So I put them underneath to dry, and then when the ride went around, Joe Rinaldi was down the other end of the midway, and he come running up the midway, stop the ride, stop the ride, somebody's hanging on the bottom of the cars when he found out it was my dungarees. Get out of the park. He said, yeah. But then they let me get back in again. <laughs> when 
When you put a new game in the park, Irving Rosendahl would come up to that game and he would stand at that game for approximately about an hour and try that game out. And if he couldn't win on that game, he would tell you in a nice way, pull the shutters down. I want the game out of the park. So you had to make sure that any time you put a new game in there, Irving Rosendahl could win or else it was going out. <laughs> he wanted to be, make everything on the up and up. He didn't want no people getting swindled or anything else. He wanted to make sure everybody got a, an even chance out of winning something. There was a hole in back of the park in the, behind the, the stage there, and the kids used to climb up from Edgewater, come up the mountain, and get into the park for free. And Irving Rosenthal knew it was there, you know, but he just let it there so they can come in the park. And people thought that, you know, they were coming in there without his no knowledge, but he was a smart man. He knew everything. He knew everything that was going around. They used to, they used to call him Little Caesar because he'd walk around the park and if somebody had their foot on the bench, he would tell them, get your foot off the bench, please. And they would ask him, who the heck is he? And he would tell them, I own the park and I don't want your feet on the bench. <laughs> that's why they called him Little Caesar. <laughs> Fletch Kramer used to have a game called the Mouse Game. It was right in the middle of the midway and he used to be around a round stand and they would have all numbers around and you would bet a number whatever number you had, then they put in the middle of the, the table there, they would put a little box, lift the box up, and the little mouse would come running out and run whatever number he ran into, you would be the winner. But people used to think that you used to put cheese in a, in a, in a little hole there, so that's why they thought it was fixed, you know. But then they came in, they closed the game down because it was cruelty to animals, cruelty to a mouse, so that's it, they closed it. <laughs> It was one Sunday I was, I was having a, another game, I was working in a game here called uh, Toss the Rings Over the Bottles. And if you got, there used to be a red, a yellow, and the blue. And if you got it on the yellow or the blue, you would get one coupon, two coupons. If you get it on the red, you get three coupons. So the people used to ask, how do I get the big prize? I said, you gotta get over the red three times straight. So they would get over the red one, two, three, and they would yell, yeah, I won, I won. I says, no, you said three over the red, three times straight. I says, I met just three times three. He says, nine. I says, well, you gotta do it two more times and I'm gonna watch you this time. So they got a little annoyed, they went to the office. They complained to Anna Cook. She was the park's general manager. Her motto was, anybody comes in the office and complains, she comes to the stand and you give them the toy. And there was no argument with Anna Cook. She was more like, I would say everybody, that she ran the park. She was actually, she would, would run the whole park, you know, everything was Anna Cook, you know. Like I said, uh, Irving Rosenthal, he was Little Caesar, but she was Big Caesar, let's put it that way. Because she, she had more to say about the park than he did. And one time when I was guessing ages, this lady in the cashier, she was the cashier in the boot, and the boot was a little square boot four doors on it, you know. So she used to bust my chops and say, you know, Brooklyn, go get me some French fries. Yeah, okay. So I go to the next door, because next door, next door to me was the French fried stand. So I told him, give me, you got a box there? He cut the box in half. And before he put the French fries in, I seen the dead rat outside. So I took the dead rat, I put it in the box, and he put the French fries on top of it. And I gave it to her. She goes, oh, thanks. And she's eating them, and she's eating them, and she's eating them with the toothpick and everything. All of a sudden, she hits the toothpick into the rat. She starts screaming like crazy. I thought the whole four walls were going to open up. <laughs> I, I like the park. I like the park because you know it was a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people. It was always so crowded and everything else. So you know, if you weren't in the stand, you couldn't be on the midway because it was so packed. You you, you know you didn't know where you were coming or going. It was nice on the rainy days. We used to sit around and wait for Paulson to announce on the speaker. Palisade Amusement Park will close for the day. Then we used to run down by the free act stage, go in the back and play cards all day long, which was it was good, you know. We had a lot of fun at those days. When Irving sold the, the property to Syntex and they said they were going to close the, the park, we all felt bad. We all started crying, you know, because even as... Older people, the older people, the cashiers and everybody that worked in the park, 
that was a second home to them. Then when the park closed, nobody had nothing. Everything was gone. And we still remember the park. And I don't care. I mean, like I said, I'm going to be 80. I'll never forget Palisade Amusement Park. That was most of my life in, in the park. Uh, me, I'd probably go back now if it was open. Maybe I'd guess ages and weights again, or maybe I'd be in one of those booths with the cashiers. Somebody give me some potatoes with a rat in it. <laughs>